Hey, 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 Mila, do I have audio? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I can't see you. So I need to know if I have audio. This is Brian. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm hoping that I have Mila. Uh, she's not answering me, so I may not have anybody here but me. And I truly don't know if I have audio going on. Uh, so test one two three test that i don't see any problem with it do i have audio mila for the last time um okay mila says she hears me but mila i need you to put your face up here where i can see it please all right so this is brian with dd214 transport we are coming to you live from just outside gunnison colorado uh if you've never been to this channel before, this is where we talk about hot shot trucking. This is a no bullshit channel, and this will teach you either to get in it or out it or how to run it. Uh, if I sound a little harsh, it's because I have thus far this week drove 2,021 miles. So uh, I rolled in here, and I'm hoping I'm, I, I don't have technical difficulties. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, let's get to the rest of this thing and let's thank our veterans and first responders for all they do and all they continue to do with their service to this country. We would not be the country we are without them. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and Wounded Warrior Projects are our charities of choice. If you want to work with me directly, go over there, choose a plan, and you can work with me directly. We've had a couple guys sign up uh, this week. I appreciate it. I will be to you as soon as I stop moving long enough to answer in an email. So thank you guys for helping us help them. Uh, live from Colorado, you know, guys, get, get questions ready. I just drove Three, uh, two thirds of the way across the country. So there's got to be questions out there. All right, a little bit of gas prices. I really don't have any news, guys. I, I don't even know what's going on. I haven't been paying attention, but I know the gas prices come down uh, to an average of 401.5 uh, across the nation. It's down four, just over four and a half cents from last week. And I'll tell you, if you guys can hear the wind, it's crazy out there. But uh, so coming across, I saw gas prices go from 422 to 365 all the way across. And it's just depends on where you go. So it's real important. You keep up with the fuel prices and you 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 search out those deals. Uh, I had never saw a 24-7 fuel stop uh, until a couple of days ago uh, coming through Kansas. And they they keep their fuel prices right, guys. Uh, I, I, I look for them now. Okay, so news. This is the news I've got, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys about it. International Road Check, they got two days here on this one. 14th through the 16th of May, and uh, they're going to be looking for dangerous activities, reckless driving for, uh, from a motor uh, 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 commercial motor vehicle and around the commercial motor vehicles. So they're going to be looking at both. Operation Safe Driving Week is scheduled for July 7th through the 13th, and again, they're looking for careless and dangerous driving. All right. Don't forget your first quarter IFTA is done is due by the end of the month. Uh, mine is done, but my state huts are not. Picture of the week. That's what we got. This came in for James. He's hauling a that looks like a generator, I believe. Come across on a uh looks like about a 20-foot container chassis. Robert, Robert's got a couple loads on here. He's got a good looking load rolling. Crazy shit you see out there. It never fails, guys. 
you're going to see some of this stuff somewhere. And uh, I, I'm not even sure what to say about that. Um, it's a, it's a, some kind of apparatus to hook up a gooseneck. And I guess if, if you got to do what you got to do, you got to do it. But that doesn't look safe to me. Uh, this sign, looky here, no trucks. Air brakes before 6.30, please. Now, I'm thinking one of these guys is going to read that and just drive through the house. They're trying to keep the Jake brake off of. No trucks, air brake. I thought that was funny. All right, so now look at this guy. Okay, I, I just, I'm, I've got it zoomed in on the next one. But... I want you to look at this thing. These laws are about 12,000 pounds, okay? That's what they weigh. And uh, anything over 10,000 pounds, you, you remember, you got to have a chain and a binder on each corner. And anything that is sticking out, any kind of uh, apparatus such as a backhoe or forks or anything like that, also has to be chained or strapped. Now, in a forklift situation, you can strap strap forklifts down as long as they're laying on the deck, they're fine. But uh, on a bucket, such as a, a backhoe, you probably have to, a full-size backhoe, you're going to have to to chain that bucket down. All right, so let me add it back. So here's picture one, and there's picture two. He has run one strap across each corner he got each corner but unfortunately he's run a strap through it and down so straps normally these let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's a four inch strap it's only going to rate for four four thousand pounds but uh if he gets caught doing that, they're going to hang him out to dry. All right, let's see what we got coming up next. Under the hood this week. Now, guys, you know, you hire – the key to business is you hire good people and you pay them good. You know, the people around you, you pay well. My tax guy, I hired. He's a good accountant. Uh, I'm not sure whether he just got behind or what he was doing, but he ended up filing a uh, uh, an extension on, on the taxes. So, I, again, I'm not sure what he's doing. But uh, he told me last week or a week or so ago that they were almost ready. And then uh, right before I left the house to come here, he said they were uh, needing to file an extension for or something. So, so that's where that's at. It's out of my hands now. It's in his hands. So I, I'm I, I take that off. All right, state huts are due. My state hut is due. I did my uh, North Carolina uh, Department of Revenue. See, I have two of them because we do some retail business, so I have to collect tax on that. So we did theirs, but I still have to do my huts for North Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry for New York and Connecticut. Everyone's out and running. I'm in Colorado, as you can see. IFTA's done, but still needs to do, you know, New York and Connecticut hut. And I'm dealing with my first damage claim still, like I said last week, which is, uh, to be honest with you, it's a major, a major uh, pain in the butt. Now, let me tell you about the damage claim. I have a sneaky suspicion that the damage claim is fraudulent, and you've got to be careful with this stuff. Um, it got hinky in the beginning. It, it got really strange because we were telling them, do not destroy or dispose of the product. And uh, I said, you have no right to do that we are getting insurance involved, blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out, once I gave them the claim number and everything, they said, well, the product's been destroyed. 
And this is plastic tubing. The only thing they had to do was run it through and, and remelt it and redo it. So I uh, had a meeting on the way out here with the insurance uh, adjuster, and he said, we could just deny the claim. And I said, and I told him, I said, well, because this is my first claim, I'm going to let you call it. If we have to pay it, we'll pay it through insurance. But, you know, this has been hinky from the beginning. And uh, I'm not real, real excited about how things worked out. So it's in the insurance's hand. I'm sure I'll be dealing with it more this week. Um, now, whoop, whoa, oh, let's go back one. Can I go back one? What am I clicking on? There we go, under the hood. As you know, I got some exciting news about this, though. As you know, the pra trailer service is ready. There's the van. Uh, within uh, 75 air miles of Charlotte, we'll come out and help you. Uh, if you need help. Now listen to this. This is the coolest thing. Let me get this down for a minute. So this is the coolest thing. Uh, I was at the store returning something, whatever it was. I was returning something and the phone rang and it was a guy, it was a car hauler guy. He said, hey, uh, I hear uh, you have a mobile service. And I said, yes. He said, well, I've got a busted fender uh, that I needed welded and can, can you can you help me well Mila and I were together at the store and and he told me where he was at and he was just right down the road and uh, I said yeah let's go check it out I was actually in the van and uh, we we get down there and sure enough the guy's a car hauler and his fender uh, the the weld on his fender as first he busted the first part and it's allowing air to get under and it's laying there doing this and it's just breaking the beads as it goes and uh, I'm going to be honest with you I haven't welded anything since high school I went to Tri-County in high school and uh, went to a welding class and Cliff Williams uh, taught me to weld and you know when I got out of uh, high school and went to the Marine Corps, I was like, well, like I ain't going to be welding. So, you know, anyway, but the band's got a welder on it. So I thought, well, shit, it can't be, you know, I'm old, but I'm surely not that old. And uh, Mila and I went over there and looked at it and it was, it was, it was beat up. The trailer was, was pretty beat up, but the, the, where the welds are broke was still pretty solid. And, uh, uh, I had to, I kind of looked at Mila and I was like, man, I hope I, I remember how to set this welder up to weld this thin stuff. So sure enough, uh, you know, the old man, look at me go, look at me go, grinding it down and welding it. I'm telling you what, so our first, second job, our second job is done. Uh, I am extremely excited. Look. I don't get too excited about too much, but when things start working the way I want them to work, uh, I, I get real excited about it. And uh, we had a good time with it and it was great. So, but that was the first job out of the van. That was the very first job right there. So we christened the van and uh, got another job out of it. Uh, I'm going back. Uh, when I get back out of Colorado, he said, I need my axle service. I said, I'll call you when I get back and we'll service your axle. No big deal. So there you go, man. I, I'm excited. I'm glad it's doing something. So, all right, let's go to somebody's beeping on me. Who could it be? I'm just making sure it's not Miss Mila. Uh, all right. So live from Colorado. Here we go. All right. So day one. Let's talk about day one. I picked up two of these go buggies, and I call them go buggies. Uh, everybody else calls them something else, but um, this one, guys, I got to tell you, 
I'm not into the go buggy movement here. That is almost seventy thousand dollars worth of go buggies. It's these highfalutin go buggies that these really rich people put on their really high dollar farms and uh, air conditioning, electric air or electric windows, uh, butt warmers, butt coolers. You know, there's some bougie shit on there. I got the invoice and I looked at it I was like, holy shit, 70 grand, 67,000 bucks is what it was. So anyway, that's over my head. That's more than I probably ever want to buy. But anyway, here we go. We uh, loaded those things up. I went uh, up the road about 60 miles and I picked up this little thing. Okay. It's a, it's a, a coal mining chute. A, a quick release coal mining chute. It's a custom build thing and uh, weighed 800 pounds. I threw it on the back and off we go. So we drive up here. Now on Monday, I ended up driving 771 miles. Okay. Um, I drove as close as I could to this coal mine in Illinois and uh, I rolled in there and stopped. So, uh, this is the coal mine. This is where we uh, where we dropped that piece on the back. Of course, everybody there was wanting me to drop those go buggies. That was the big ticket. Nobody even saw me. Nobody saw how nice and clean the truck was, nice and clean the trailer was, nothing. Nobody saw any of that. They saw those two go buggies sitting there. So, oh, here I am. I, I'm, I'm on site. They make you wear a heart. You know, guys, if you go into mines, uh, be prepared to give the last four your social, social, uh, your full name, and I believe your mailing address. Because if something would happen and that mine would blow up or there would be some kind of catastrophe, they have to know by law who's on site. So that's that, and that's why you carry a hard hat. All right, so we roll out of there. Now, let me tell you, we're hitting crazy storms. And when I say crazy storms, I'm telling you for about 10 hours and 30 minutes, I steered left. The wind was so bad that it was just pushing uh, pushing me over. Um, the bad part about it was you'd be heading down the road and you would be turning like, the, you know, sideways, trying to hold the truck up. And then all of a sudden the wind would stop, which then you went that way and that a headwind would hit you in the face. And all of a sudden you lost all your speed. I was only running about 62 and a 75 most of the day because it was horrible. And that was coming across Kansas, uh, eastern, uh, western Missouri, and then into Kansas. And it was just terrible. So it was no fun on day two. I was absolutely exhausted on day two. My leg, where I was having to, to throttle control this truck, was, was tore up. I mean, I was tired. So that was day two, and today is day three. Uh, so I'll go back to day two a second. It sucked ass all the way across. Day three, I am 80 miles out. Uh, we're in Colorado now. Uh, now, guys, I did a test coming across. Now, here we just crossed the Colorado line, but I did a test coming across. Now, I want you guys to listen quickly to this test. Speed limit, 75 miles an hour, okay? Uh, this morning when I got up, I'd filled completely up last night, went to bed. This morning when I got up, I got on the interstate, it's flat, okay, for the most part. It's just rolling, rolling hills, flat. Not, the wind wasn't bad. There wasn't anything crazy going on. So I wanted to do a test, and I set my truck on 75 miles an hour, and I use cruise control. 
I've never used cruise control valves. It, it to me, it's a waste of energy. So going down the road on that tank of gas, I got seven miles to the gallon. Okay. Seven miles to the gallon. Now I had to fill up next, next one. I set the cruise control to 68 miles an hour. And I ran that fuel out. And I got 9.10 miles to the gallon. Now, normally, if I'm throttle controlling it on something like that, I'll get 10, 10.1. Okay. So the cruise control is costing you about a mile per gallon if you're running it. And, you know, you got to get to the point to where you're not pushing that throttle down with your foot because that's what the cruise control does. If you get your throttle set on a flat piece of land to the speed limit you want to run, and when it goes up a hill, you don't change that throttle. You leave your foot steady, you will slow down. You're going to. You see big trucks slow down, but you're not forcing that thing to kick down a gear, run your RPMs up, and use a ton, a ton of fuel, okay? So that's my fuel lesson for today. All right. We got some more pictures. Now, if you want to know what it's like coming across the Midwest, that's pretty much it. That's going to be your view. Uh, there's just really not a lot to look at. It's rolling. You go through Kansas, Missouri, Kansas, and then the eastern part of Colorado. That's what you're looking at. Uh, now I'm getting into Colorado a good bit, and you can start to see the mountains over there uh, on the white tips. I was actually driving on 70 coming into Denver, and then uh, because I'm four hours southwest, of uh, Denver, it took me around it, so I didn't hit it. I ended up in Colorado Springs. Um, beautiful place. That's Colorado Springs. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is coming into the back mountains where I'm at, going to this farm. And it's a two-lane road, uh, very curvy. It's running the river. and uh, But it's absolutely gorgeous. If you've never been uh, I highly recommend coming out and taking a look because it is beautiful. All right, so let's see where we're at here. Look at that. I took that just a little bit ago. And, uh, no, I mean, it's just majestic, absolutely majestic. All right, so this is the place I'm at. I'll tell you the name, but I can't pronounce it. So this is this is exactly where I'm at in this next picture. If you see right there, my, I'm on the fourth floor, and that mountain is my picture out my window. So that's what I'm seeing right now. That's out my window. It's beautiful. So yeah, guys, I can walk out there and get a snowball. I thought it would. I thought it would save. Uh, I would take Mila back a snowball. Probably won't. So let's talk about it. We got comments and questions. I want to bring Mila on here for a minute because Mila has had a week. You know, she's she's been running this thing since Sunday afternoon, and I want to deter her, talk to her about how it went. Oop, lost my camera. I hope you can still hear me, Mila. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, but you okay. still. No, nah, my camera went out on me. So if you can still hear me, we're good. So how did yes. your week go? Well, week was really interesting and crazy. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, what happened? What happened? Business. Business happened? Yes. It gets a little crazy when I'm out of there, but it's only because you're learning. So ah. just, 
just to understand that that things aren't that way, you know, every day. But we we've, we've had a lot going on this week, so. Um, well, I don't mind. Today I have to find my ceiling and push it up because it looks like I have to go higher. Yeah, uh, you tapped out a little bit today, didn't you, guys? If you don't know, Mila was just a tad on the stressed outside today. Uh, we had a power outage. We had a uh, about the same time we had to get a um, we had to get a uh, a room for me. Uh, we had load issues, so we had dispatch issues. What else do we have? Uh, Panera Bread, the internet was really slow. <laughs> I had to run. Yeah. Tell me. I Tell had me. to run everywhere just to find the internet to find your room. And time is ticking. Time to get the kids and the lunch lunchtime at Panera. There's people more than, I don't know, crazy. That was no joke. But we did it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, guys, I'm going to leave Mila on here because I don't have a, my, my camera's not working. I'm, I'm afraid to pull it out because I'll lose my audio as well. So what I'm going to do is just, there it is. Hey, look at that. It Welcome back. back. I'm back. So, all right, let's run over here and, uh, let's talk to some people. We've got Russell Phelps in the house. We've got Frackleton. We got Mike, uh, Kelly, by Unite. Uh, Russell's got a question. We got John Selton. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's. Brett, see you. Semper Fi, brother. Uh, all right. So let's talk about it. And. Uh, Let's bring on the questions, if you would, Miss Mila. And we'll talk about it with Russell Phelps. How's the roads out west? Post bad weather out of the way. Uh, the roads in Kansas are absolutely wonderful. Uh, and the rest of them are sort of hit and miss. Uh, Colorado's first 80, 90 miles, uh, the, for lack of better words, are shit. Um, very rough, very, uh, they are asphalt and they've been fixed a billion times. Um, most places have decent roads. And another thing I see out there is a ton of road projects, a lot of infrastructure projects going on. Okay. Well, we got, I hope that helps Russ. Keep them coming. Uh, do you utilize do you utilize direct customers mainly, or do you grab stuff from the board? I do both. Uh, this load coming out here was a direct customer. Uh, the little load I picked up going to Illinois was a, a load board. It was just going in the way or on the way, in route on the way. I took it because it added money to my load. So, and at eight hundred pounds, yeah, I take eight hundred pounds in a pickup. So there you go. Uh, once you get loaded it, and you have room or weight to room and weight to spare, you absolutely want to do the best you can to put something else with it. You want to maximize your weight and deck space. That is how you make money. Okay, Russell. Russell, if you want another question, what is your backup plan? If you drop off one load in route to the second and that pickup goes poo and you have no other loads around the location, what do you do? You stop and you wait and you look and you expand your window to, and that's not something that happens once in a while. That happens a lot. That happens a lot, guys. Loads drop. Uh, you get shady brokers that gets a better deal from somebody else and they drop you. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, Renee, glad you're here, brother. Burlington, North Carolina, we got to talk. So, anyway, by the way, Mila doesn't allow me to sit on this. So, she's yelling at me. So, I got to shut that part down. But um, it happens a lot. Um, 
if I would have, I make sure my first pickup is solid. Okay. And my first pickup was those two go buggies. And uh, I loaded them in the nose. I normally would not have loaded them on the nose like that. But between the two of them, it was only 4,000 pounds. And trailer and a truck could handle it. Now, one thing, one thing to talk to you guys about is this. With 4,000 pounds on it, that's normally, and no counterweight, let's go this way, no counterweight balance on the back, only the 800. As I was driving, when I stopped, I looked and I could tell my ass was sagging too much. When your butt sags, okay, when you got too much weight on the nose and no counterbalance on the back and your butt sags down, your tires will do this. And when they do that, they wear on the outside of the tire. Well, I stopped and got fuel and I always check my tires when I get fuel. Guys, you got to. You got to be out there checking that equipment. So I went around. Everything was good. I got to the front tire and I looked at it. I was like, ah, shit. And I just walked in. I jacked up my, my ride up to, I think it was on 35 pounds. Was not enough. I jacked it up, doubled it, went to 70, cured that problem just like that. Saved my tires. So having the right equipment, understand what's going on with your equipment is very important. Okay. I hope that helped you out, Mr. Phelps. I'll answer every question you got on here, brother. So, John, it's 410 is what I got. 373 is too low. I mean, I, I'm that's low, brother. Uh, high output engine. So, it's 410 rear end. What he's asking is, what rear end am I running, which is a 373 or 410? 373 is too low. Now, your fuel mileage is going to kill you. Uh and I've got the high output motor, and you definitely need that. So I hope that helps you out. Let's see what else we got going on. Hey, man, when are you going to do a video about 5,500 with a sleeper? Damn it. <laughs> All right. I got Robert. Robert, is Robert here? Yes. Or is he still running? He's, he's here. Okay, Robert. Uh, if you can hear me, brother, uh, we need to get together and do a video on the 5500. We don't, you don't, I know you're shy and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to come on camera if you don't want to, but we need to look through, you know, look at it, get what your feelings are about it, uh, and, uh, uh, Put it out there for the guys to hear. You know, we're, we're all about information. More information we got, better off everybody's going to be. So I know the only thing I know, look, I brought the 5,500 home and backed it in the driveway and set it up. And that's about all I know about it. I've never spent a day in it, never pulled a load with it. So it's all going to be on Robert. That's his baby. So uh, we will do that. I'm sorry. I apologize. When I get home, uh, I'll get with Robert, and we'll we'll get it figured out uh, the the pros and cons of it. So, thank you, Facebook user. Uh, that's all I got for a name is Facebook user. So we'll absolutely do it. So, do we have anything else, Miss Meadle? Yes. No, we do. Agree. Too low. I was asking specifically because your fuel mileage made me assume we have some well okay I, i'm assuming we do uh the uh my fuel mileage it runs like this dead empty on that truck i'll get 12 if i'm empty i put a nat's ass on it and i'll go to 10 it does it's, i don't know why it doesn't matter what i put on it i'll drop uh that's I told you what it was with uh, those go buggies and stuff. Uh, with it, with me on my foot, I was getting nine, nine, one, nine, two on average. Me on the, uh, I'm sorry, me on my foot, I was getting around ten. Me on the the uh, cruise control, 
I was 9-1. Me at 75 miles an hour, I was down in 7. So, I mean, guys, your speed it will make or break your fuel economy. Uh, if you're going to run 75 miles an hour, which with a load, you shouldn't run that. I mean, I wasn't really comfortable running it. I just wanted to run a test, and it was the speed limit. So I was like, okay, let me run this and just see what I actually come up with. And that's and that's what it was. So, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps you out, John. All right. Let's see what we got. Do you run an auxiliary tank? If so, what size? I do not. I have a 50-gallon fuel tank. Actually holds 52 gallon in, in the neck. Uh and yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, that's what I run. And let me tell you guys, at my age, I'm going to stop and pee. So, you know, there's no need in, in me having it. Secondly, you're not gaining anything now with IFTA if running an auxiliary tank. Um, I've got one guy that consistently, consistently fills up in South Carolina and runs North Carolina and Georgia. I don't know that he saved anything by the time IFTA came about and he got thumped with it. So, you know, you have to do your numbers and see if you actually save anything. With me, I'm not carrying that extra weight. You know, you put a 50-gallon tank, diesel seven seven and change or eight a gallon, and you're four or 500 pounds you're constantly carrying. So, no, I don't. Okay. Miss Mila, what you got? That was the last one. Come on, guys. I'm in Colorado. What you want to know? Oh, can, uh, can you hear the wind? I want to know that. Can you hear the wind? And I can. You can't? You can't? Yeah. Yes. The wind is just howling out there. Um, all right. John says he's pulling six to ten, usually about eight. Okay. Okay. Um, I think if, uh, John, my suggestion would be this. Um, you know, try to, to try to come off of the cruise control and practice foot control. Um, if you can do that, uh, one, one or two drivers saved a mile per gallon because the anytime, unless you're out here on perfectly flat land, um, you know, that that cruise is trying to keep you at one speed. So when you go down the hill, it lets off the gas, and it's still in that momentum you had going down the hill. And as soon as you roll to the bottom and start up the side, it hammers the gas. And that's where not using the cruise control and using foot control and working with your uh, throttle control is – is you know that that's that's where you make your nickel and this is a, a game of pennies so understand that all right what's the furthest west coast of colorado you've traveled i do not venture much further than that myself i've been from washington down through california i've done the lower 48 uh the only place i've never stopped is wyoming and uh you know, I, I, that's the only state I've never been to. And I don't think there's but six people that live there. So they haven't called me yet. If they call, I'll go. The money's right. All right. All right, guys. It looks like we're pretty much done here. I'm in Colorado. Like I said, I will drop in 80 miles. 80 miles doesn't sound like a lot, but on these roads, uh, if you guys look up Gunnison, Colorado, these roads are two lane, um, sort of like the, the roads were back in the 60s. You know, they're good roads. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're mountain roads. They're going through ravines, and then you got to go up the side of a mountain. And, you know, it's basically 50 mile an hour roads. So, all right, we're going to cut it. I want to thank everybody for coming. You know, guys, love seeing everybody. I want to welcome. Uh, where's he at? Oh, where's he at? Don't go nowhere, man. I was going to welcome you. 
Renee Sanchez. Yeah, Renee Sanchez. Yeah. Amon Kishore, Amon Kishore is here. Can you believe that? All right. Look at that. Uh, so, you know, I love seeing you guys every week. We we have fun with this. I try to give you the best information I can give you. And, you know, love your family because you got to remember every time a driver leaves. Oh, can we talk about one more thing? This week, I've been working with two drivers. Uh, these two drivers, I've been working with hand in hand, and I've got one driver who's not going to make it. He can't do it. He's not going to start. Okay. I got another driver that shouldn't start. Now, the crazy part about it is they're both in their heads are wrong. The one driver that's not going to start, okay, is the driver that is nutting his numbers down so tight that he's not going to take the step, okay? When I say nutting his numbers down, I mean, he's working on everything at the, the worst possible case scenario on every aspect, and he's not going to do it. You... The other guy is talking about buying a new truck, new trailer, having all this overhead and debt. He's not going to do it. I'm, I'm talking to him out of not doing it because he shouldn't do it. You got one that should not and one that shouldn't it is. So, uh, you know, I told another guy, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So you can't make him listen. So where we're at today is love your family, guys. Love your family. Because they're all you have. Mila, I love you, babe. Thank you for all you did this week. I know it was hell. Uh, it'll all get better. Uh, I, I, of I know. course it will. <laughs> Tomorrow all right, guys. Day. All right. We're out of here. Thanks for everything. See you.